And speaking of the mainstream media, um, in my lifetime, your lifetime, I have noticed such a shift from reporting the news. I mean, when we were young in America, the Watergate um, investigations and how that broke, and that was genuine investigative journalism. And now it seems to be all like a drama sitcom that's being produced on the news channels. And that's, I think, and I, I'm wondering what your thoughts are on this, is how that we're getting to this leaning to the right that we're finding throughout the Western world at the moment, between America, what happened, what's happening in France, what's happened here with Brexit. What are your thoughts on that? It's like two things joining together at a bad time. Um, first, you've got a, a president now who's a game show host and likes tweeting things. So he's totally up with being a personality. Everything he does is based on perceived ratings that he's getting and the amount of viewers watching, the amount of people reading his twats or twits or whatever the fuck they're called, tweets, that's it. Um, it is, you've got a game show host as president of potentially the most powerful and dangerous country on the planet. That's really bad. Um, the things he espoused on the way to get into power tapped into people's uh, disaffection with the way politics already was with which was what Clinton was representing. They didn't like it as it was, they felt shat on already, which they were, so they turned to the outsider who came in from nowhere, who was also appealing to a bunch of redneck slash racist type people who suddenly found it okay to be slightly, or even more than slightly right wing about their perceptions of people with different colors skin and that sort of thing and blaming immigrants and not anybody else who looks different for them for the problems that they've got to deal with on the back of the fact it's nothing to do with other people. It's to do with their bosses, it's to do with the law, it's to do with eco economics, it's to do with the way they're being governed and controlled. But that's too much information to take on. It's much easier to find someone to blame. And if it's people who look different, they can you can see them on the streets at the same time. So that and the Brexit thing, uh, that was also a protest vote against Cameron and the way that austerity has been shitting on everybody except the fucking upper class for about up to five to ten years or whatever it is now uh it was a protest vote against that that surprisingly won the vote so a lot of people who voted to come out were surprised by it and on reflection uh they think well maybe we should have probably stayed in because it's all gone to shit in a handcart with hell in the handcart and we haven't even left yet yeah. um my mean my main reason for voting to remain was like you want to take control from the european bureaucrats no matter how shit that might be and give all that to control to a fucking Tory party yeah. in this country when they're already fucking us over. If they if they get rid of all the fucking health and safety laws right. to do with work and all sorts and trade laws and union laws and all the rights that we do have because of the European effects, so to speak, get rid of all that, then we are really going to be in a fucking police state. We're all on fucking uh, the so-called living or not living so well wage yeah. uh, if we can find a fucking job that's left over. Um, so I thought it's... It's at least the two fucking evils. Yeah. Um, the the swing to um, right wing politi politicians is working on the same misguided principle that if you tell people you're on their side because they're a minority, um, it manages to defeat logic and facts when it comes to the way people vote. They will vote for somebody who says they're on their side, the side of the people. But unfortunately, the people saying that are largely right-wing approaching fascists and they are using other people, immigrants, different colour people as uh, scapegoats and so suddenly the minority uh, which is in fact the immigration, the immigrants and refugees are, my, are actual minorities um, are being like blamed on behalf of this new minority of working class white people who've always lived there because now we're the minority because all our jobs are being taken over, being swamped and all this like ridiculous use of language like it's all a disease coming our way and we have to fight back and it's like it's really ill-informed and it's lying, it's bullshit and it's got to be called out. Now people are calling it out like in the Dutch Holland uh, presidency in the election in Holland. He didn't make it. That was called out, he didn't make it. These people get far too much fucking press coverage for being nasty, evil shit. As it, like, it fills the papers, it gets the front pages going. Like Farage and UKIP getting way too much fucking publicity. He's not even an MP. He can't even get voted into his own fucking hometown. 
they're getting on like uh, say question time or whatever mm. whereas the Green Party you have got MPs don't get fucking looking on any of their views which are way more fucking balanced and together exactly and it's it's a scary time now with the new yeah. election coming up and seeing what's going to happen um, I'm here as a European citizen so the whole Brexit thing is very important to me and I'm a little nervous seeing what's going to happen in this election what do you think is going to happen with this new snap election coming up <laughs> I'd like to think that everybody gets it in their head that this is their last fucking chance to get rid of the Tories or just reduce it down to a point where there has to be some sort of coalition to get some sort of party in power. And at that point, the Lib Dems swing round 180 degrees and go with Labour and they form some sort of coalition like that. Or maybe the SNP can get involved. Yeah. If the opposition parties have actually got it together to like join in instead of all saying, oh, we're better than they are, yeah. the infighting would stop, perhaps and the Tories would be out. But so tactical voting, even against your own instincts, would be good. But it's st everybody's saying in the media that it's going to be a Tory landslide. But it's like, that's what they're going to say, isn't it? Most of them are like basically on the side of the government. Um, but if you look a bit further down in, in the shadows of what's on the internet in terms of media outlets, like the Huffington Post and stuff, it's not all so obviously going to be a landslide whatsoever and there are thousands and thousands of people joining up the Labour Party and it could all go one way or the other. Yeah. Uh, so vote tactically to locally get rid of the fucking Tory party and see what happens after that. And well, hopefully... We'll be fucked either way. Yeah, definitely, but it's maybe we'll be a little less fucked with... It's written in the Constitution. You will be fucked over <laughs> as long as you keep joining in. That's part of the problem. <laughs> stands out to you that's happening in the world today, whether it be political or environmental or anything that you're very passionate about? Um, I kind of get very passionate about most things if I concentrate hard enough. Yeah. Uh, I don't know where to start. Um, animal rights, human rights. If politics at the moment is uh, the state of the rise of food banks that just the fact there haven't been more protests, mm -hmm. the non-rise of people making protests except voting on forms that come through the emails. Yeah. Today we've got, we've got so many thousands of signatures to this, it's going to go through Parliament and that and just like, well, is it effective? It's, it's, well, a, me... it's a tide of protest, but it's not visible and it's not actual and I don't know, from experience I know that being at a protest and physically being there and, and marching and walking around and being with other people, that feeling of community is way more powerful for the people involved in it even if it's not as powerful in terms of getting results which is a you know you never know it worked with the poll tax yeah. um it's just much more self-fulfilling for a lot more people to be out there on the streets doing it rather than doing it online and it's all done in 30 seconds yeah. i don't get a warm fuzzy feeling when i sign an online uh, petition to the no. government but so i have when i'm with a group it's not doing it it's like mm, okay yeah. how much effort did that take no effort whatsoever exactly but, but yeah so involvement's got to happen and whatever level you, level you can get it to um feeling passionate the main thing about that is actually still feeling passionate about anything mm. uh the whole crackdown on our senses is enormous, especially the last couple of years. Yeah. And the temptation must be to just go, 
I fucking, fucking can't deal with this anymore. Fuck it. Turn the telly on. Waste your life away. And uh, do that. Count your blessings what you got. You're not ill. You're living in a country where you know, we can still say what we feel. But really, that's the relaxation that will come before a very big fucking storm if we carry on thinking that way. Yeah. Or if we start thinking that way. Because apathy and letting other, other people get on with it really is going to cause a shitstorm that's going to be very hard to fight off when they come knocking at your door, so to speak. And I think that's a very appropriate thing to end on here. So I want to thank you very much for taking the time oh, and uh, have a great gig tonight. We yeah. will see you. Good. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers.